So today I want to talk a use case we have a, when we used <coughs> Zabbix and uh, machine learning. Uh, well, and to be precise, it was Zabbix uh, notifications and machine learning. Since the data project uh, I want to talk uh, first, it came out to be not really machine learning, but I, I will talk this about this a little bit later. Uh, I actually would like to tell a lot about machine learning in our company, but you know it's five minutes and we do a lot of interesting tasks like we uh, deal with computer vision, uh, smart parking, uh, face recognition, uh, we have our own uh, school for machine learning for students and young professionals. Lots of nice things. It's a very hype theme right now. <coughs> it's uh, many people involved. So, uh, the project. Uh, we use Zabbix for eight years uh, as our primary monitoring system. And since that time, there are many professionals, uh, system administrators, uh, has created thousands of items and triggers. And it's, uh, it, it has been always um, a process of uh, creating new items and triggers and uh, figuring that some of them are not correct and cleaning them. So, uh, by the moment we uh, fixed all problems with our uh, Zabbix and uh, get high NVPS, as like we told yesterday, our monitoring team has become overwhelmed by some amount of uh, notifications. Uh, let me get, uh, remember the numbers. It was something like uh, they were able to process 50 to 70 incidents a day, but they have started to get like 700. Uh, so, and it takes some time to clean this, um, well, I would call this mess out, because a uh, one to fix a trigger, sometimes it has to deal with legacy code from, say, seven years ago or to solve administrative task if it's another department, if it's important for them, or to deal with human factor. So we used machine learning uh, this way. We took our data about all the incidents or problems in Zabbix terminolo termin terminology and uh, uh, feed it to uh, machine learning and it's started to predict that a newly created problem will require some uh, real human attention or it will uh, be uh, closed by an, some bulk processing or automatic means by monitoring team. So we were able to prioritize problem depending on that. Uh, and it was very important because out of 700 they started to get 30 most relevant ones and started to attend uh, real important problems first. And the secondly, uh, machine learning has given us a tool to cluster the problems uh, by their probability, or by their simula uh, similarity, so we can uh, group them and visualize them as clusters and attend to uh, fixing uh, the most noisy ones first, so we could improve efficiency of dealing with problems, of fixing the problems. And uh, to sum up, I'll tell you a few abstracts and experience uh, we learned uh, uh, dealing with machine learning for last year. So the first one, uh, keep your raw data. Uh, if it's possible, disable housekeeping. Uh, offload your data to some big data storage of your choice. We used ClickHouse for that. The second, uh, if there is a way to solve, uh, to analyze your data, to solve your task by non-machine learning, may, uh, by non-machine non learning um, method, then use it. Uh, mathematics, algorithms, logic, statistics, if they work, they work much better. They give 100% precision. precision. Uh, third, uh, if you deal, say, with problems, uh, you should save not only the problems, but uh, a way how your problems are resolved by your monitoring team. Who, when, what, what commands, what messages, what services involved. Whatever uh, attributes there are, you should keep them. And the fourth, um, 
you need quite a good amount of data to start with machine learning. But when you have it, um, you will have a chance to uh, be able to get some new insights from the data and to probably automate some routine tasks. Thank you very much. <laughs>